G'day ZD here and today I want to talk all about the Archmage support and mana casters and building around them and how they work and things like that. Uh, this is the strongest support gem in the game by far and probably the biggest damage boosting mechanic in the entire game as well. It is in absolutely and entirely busted. It was added to the game to help support self-cast mana based casters, you know, with the prevalence of things like traps, mines and totems and triggered ways of casting spells. Self-casting is often not the most popular choice because of many other payoffs for going different routes for casting your spells. Well, this one is a hell of a payoff. It does require building around. It is a build in itself. This single support gem is more important than even your skill choices in many cases. Uh, it is absolutely huge. So what does it do? It replaces your gem's mana cost with a percentage of your unreserved mana. So in this case, 6% of your unreserved maximum mana. And then what it does in addition to adding lightning, which it really doesn't need to do, it uh, takes 124% of whatever your mana cost is and then adds that as flat lightning damage. So how strong is it? Let's take a look at Stormbrand, right? Here's a falling Stormbrand. We have a nice, you know, regular kind of storm dam Stormbrand average damage of 3,900. With the Archmage support, we have 17,800. <laughs> I don't know what that's like, quadrupling my damage or something? It is ridiculous. There's a few different levers you hit here to scale up the damage for Archmage. It's uh, all about increasing your maximum total mana unreserved and also increasing the mana cost of your skills as much as possible. And through doing that, you add just huge, huge amounts of added flat lighting damage. So you can see I'm using on both my Orb of Storms and my Stormbrand here. We take a look at my Orb of Storms, we have something like the, an average lightning damage of 3,500 to 10,000, and then with the Archmage support on a 4-link, we have 20,000 to 29,000 out of lightning damage. So it's quite clear how busted this is, and it is one of the single biggest, it is probably the, the single biggest damage boosting mechanic in the game. Nothing really even comes close, whether it's like any other support gem or any other thing you can equip, whether it's like a mirror tier item or something like that. It is crazy it is crazy so how do you scale archmage how do you most take advantage of it so there's two main levers you're hitting here to increase your damage the first one is increasing your mana pool so to do that you're going to do a combination of things you're going to try and get mana on gear so wherever possible you're going to get added flat mana on gear or if possible percentage increased mana on gear so you've got things like at series foible is a very good choice um it's hard to beat this with rare amulets but you can get really good rare amulets that have other things on them but it's pretty hard to beat 100 flat mana with percentage increased mana on top of that and then it also has mana regen which is nice for just supporting your spell casting keeping your mana pool full and because with builds like this you're mostly going to be using things like mind of a matter to, for defenses uh it's good to have as much mana regen as possible but it's not directly damage related mostly we're just talking about that flat mana coincidentally you can also scale the mana on that series foible with the quality life and mana catalysts although those are a bit expensive uh, other items are things like Cloak of Defiance, which gives a bunch of flat mana as well, and also supports the defensive side of things with Mind Over Matter. And also things like Ivory Tower, if you want to go into a low life setup, also has a bunch of flat mana on it, whilst giving some nice other synergy stuff you can do. The second part is getting mana on the tree, obviously, is really important, so you're looking for any of the bigger mana nodes, things like Deep Wisdom, the mana scaling over here, Arcane Will is very good, also because it adds Energy Shield as a part of your... Uh, uh, based on your mana, so it's actually quite a lot of energy shield when you get this much mana. If I take it off, I, I've got like, I'm getting like 100, 170 extra flat energy shield there. I don't have any energy shield scaling in this build, so uh, if you actually went into energy shield scaling, it would uh, be a nice little boost there, like the equivalent of another pair of gloves or something like that. So uh, pretty nice. And obviously things like deep thoughts and potential mana clusters as well, which I'm going to explore in the future. Also things like arcane capacitor are pretty good, and arcane surge happens to be very good on builds like this, uh, especially with the arcane surge effect scaling that you can get here. So things on the passive tree, in addition to your mana on your gear, any mana you can get. And then Hierophant is an obvious choice. You'll be able to play other classes with an Archmage setup, but Hierophant is the more obvious choice just because he has a lot of mana. He's got a bunch of increased mana here. We've got like 40% increased mana for these two points here, in addition to Transfiguration of Mine, which gives you extra spell damage scaling based on all your mana investments, so that's good. And uh, also just like a nice support for Arcane Surge and Mana Regen and things like that as well. So uh, synergizes pretty nicely with a lot of what I'm doing in my particular build here. So getting as much mana as possible through your Ascendancy, Passive Tree, and Gear. That's the first thing, right? That's the first and most obvious thing because every increase you get to your maximum mana increases because it's the... 6% of your maximum unreserved mana is the base spell cost, effectively. 
So then the second lever that you're hitting to increase your damage with Archimage support is increasing your mana costs. So the first part is, if possible, having a high mana cost spell, but support gems are really, really important because each support gem comes with a mana multiplier, which is normally a negative thing, but in this case, it's a huge damage boost. So Lightning Penetration, which doesn't give any actual tooltip damage, right? Because it's just penetration that doesn't get calculated on tooltip. We take a look at this. I do 13,900, but when I suck it in Lightning Penetration, we go up to 17,800. So Lightning Penetration also adds a bunch of extra damage because of the high amount of multiplier of 140%. So it's really good. You generally want to steer clear of any added damage in a build like this, in an Archmage build, because you're getting so much added damage from Archmage that you want things that are increased damage percentage more damage, penetration, and things like that that are leveraging the high base damage you already have because you have so much base damage, adding like an extra 100 lightning damage isn't really going to do that much. You're already getting so much of that. So things like controlled destruction are really good. Concentrated effect has a big amount of multiplier as well as being a bunch of damage. So, uh, and then in particular, getting like your fifth and sixth support gems. I'm still only on a five link, haven't been able to get a six link yet, but once we get a six link, we add like another 130% multiplier or something like that, which increases the mana cost further. So the more links you get, the more damage you get. Obviously, that's always the case, but even more so here because you're multiplying the mana cost a lot. So then the next step to increasing your mana costs as much as possible, because that's a good thing. We're getting more damage the more it costs. And as you can see, I'm up to 1,000, almost 1,600 mana cost on Stormbrand. The next thing is any items that have increased mana cost on them. So things like Voidbringer has 80% increased mana cost of skills. That's a very good item for this. Apep's Rage has 40% increased mana cost of skills. Um, otherwise, Apep's doesn't really do much for us. It's pretty much just that. It's got good cast speed, which is nice. Um, but it's pretty much, you know, just a big mana cost increase. Um, I was testing with a... I think I have another one here that I was... This is the one I was using earlier which has like 93 mana plus all lightning skill gems and spell damage and stuff like that, right? As well as intelligence. So that's like a decent one for a setup like this. This is way more damage than that one. <laughs> I think that's pretty easy to show here. Uh, we got like 16,900 to 17,800. So a pretty decent uh, damage increase on Apeps there. So it's possible that you might be able to make a rare wand with like a whopper mana cost, but even plus one lightning gems, which is a very powerful mod, Plus one all lightning spell gems is usually very, very powerful. Gives like very little damage because it's just adding a little bit of damage from Stormbrand's base damage, which is so small in compared to the Archmage damage. So things like that, increasing the mana cost. There are some other choices as well. I believe I have a, a Fevered Mind somewhere in here. Uh, Fevered Mind is also a good choice. It can get uh, a large amount of increased mana cost of skills there as well. So 50% increased mana cost of skills. And you can run multiple of these, but the more you go, the more you start, might start running into problems. It's a little bit of a balancing act. You want to get as much mana cost as you can, whilst also still being able to cast your skills and have a comfortable play style. If you get to the point where your mana is costing like two, 3,000, then it might start to get a little bit awkward to like build up your brands or use whatever spells. And it's going to depend on the spells, but I'll get into that in a moment. So uh, Fevered Mind's another choice. Now, you could do Indigon, but good luck with Indigon on an Archmage setup. In theory, everyone's like, what about Indigon? Uh, Indigon has like 50 to 60% increased mana cost of skills. But if you look at the second part of that, for each 200 total mana you've spent recently. So if I cast once, I've spent almost 1600 mana. So we get multiple times of this increased mana cost for a single cast. So I cast once and my mana cost probably goes up. I, I'm terrible at math, but probably goes up to like four or 5,000 or something. So I will simply be unable to cast spells after casting once. So uh, I imagine Indigon is very, very difficult to use in Archmage build and probably not viable in most cases that I can think of. But uh, it's... That's another example of something you could use, but I think it's probably going to be... I'm just going to say good luck with using Indigon. Um, so now let's talk about the actual spells you want to use. Now I'm using two of the very obvious choice spells here. Um, and these are spells that are persistent, ones that you don't have to spend the mana cost on very often. So one is Orb of Storms. Orb of Storms you cast once and it keeps going. It keeps doing its damage. It works brilliantly with Archmage because you just get a whopping massive amount of lightning damage and it just keeps going. And the good thing about Orb of Storms is you can use things like Tempest Shield, if you haven't seen this before. You can use Tempest Shield, which is a lightning skill, to constantly proc the zapping effect. So the good thing is you're, you're amplifying the damage or you're causing Orb of Storms to trigger with its massively increased damage, but it's not costing you any extra mana because you don't have to have Archmage on the Tempest Shield. The Tempest Shield isn't the thing that's dealing the damage. The Orb of Storms is. The Tempest Shield is just an activator for Orb of Storms. And if you haven't seen this, the reason you use Tempest Shield is because it's just got a very fast cast time. 
and you can just hold down the button and spam it and it'll zap all monsters around you so it's very effective and a solid choice with an archmage setup but you could use other spells if you wanted to as activators just it just so happens temper shield is typically the best one to do that with um, and then other good examples are things like brands because they have a persistent effect and you don't have to cast them very often so at its baseline you cast a brand it attaches to enemies it keeps zapping keeps stealing its damage and it lasts quite a while right it lasts like 12 seconds or something um so brands last quite a while and you only have to spend the mana cost once which is plenty of time to recover your mana so there's a little bit of a build up and once you get your mana cost pretty high it takes a little bit to build up your My brands mana is spent but the thing that <laughs> you'll hear that every now and then when you're first building up your brands but the thing that makes brands really really insane is brand recall it's another example it's, it's just like tempest shield for orb of storms brand recall allows you to keep casting your brands and then you can just keep casting brand recall and this refreshes the duration by 1.2 seconds each time you cast it and at the moment my cooldown is 1.55 on re brand recall so you can keep those brands going almost indefinitely just by holding down that brand recall button and running through maps so you can get all of your brands up and i have six because i've stacked as many maximum possible brands as possible i might even go to seven if i can and i can just run around and we are constantly keeping up that massive archmage damage so that so this is the first and probably strongest category of spells with archmage things that you don't have to spend the mana cost on constantly because this is a ridiculous mana cost right it's a ridiculous amount of mana to spend but when you can just keep taking advantage of that boost of damage without having to spend the cost again and again that's damn fine usage of archmage the uh it compare that to something like say you're using arc and you're just spamming it regularly you're going to be spending like one 2k mana every time you cast you've got like five casts per second or something you're out of mana in like a second flat right so uh those are the example of like a not good setup with archmage they're just not going to work very well however there are some other things you can do that aren't like persistent effects like orb of storms and storm call uh another good setup is almost anything with echo and or pledge of hands so echo allows you to get a repeat of your spell cast uh, that doesn't cost any additional mana. So Echo boosts your initial cost, which is good because you do more damage, but you actually get two casts for the price of 1.2 or 1.3 or 1.4 or something. Um, but uh, effectively, it's much more mana efficient. And the same goes for Pledge of Hands, even more so because it has greater spell Echo, which repeats twice, and each like repeat doesn't cost mana again. So Pledge of Hands setups, I think, are going to be really good. Something like, I would guess, like, Pledge of Hands Ball Lightning would be really nice because you are only spending your uh, mana once every three casts effectively. So you stop, you hold down the cast button, you do zzz, 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 send out three Bolt Lightnings that are doing whopping massive damage. And it's much more mana efficient because of the echo support there. It also just so happens that Pledge of Hands also has a ton of increased mana on it. So very good for builds like this. So that's another angle you could take with Archmage is going things like Ball Lightning or other spells. It could be almost anything really with Pledge of Hands as long as it works well with echo and uh, feels comfortable to play. Um, damage effectiveness is somewhat important, but it, yeah, most damage effectiveness is balanced around the fact that the spell's hitting a bunch of times, like Ball Lightning, for example, is going to keep zapping, so it doesn't really matter that much. So those are good setups. The other good thing you could do with Archmage is unleash setups. So you could have like two skills, like how I have two skills, and you could unleash them. So unleash builds up several charges. You cast once, spend mana once, and then it does a bunch of repeats as you when you cast and uh, those don't cost extra mana. So you're taking advantage of the increased damage and uh, unleashing all of that very mana efficiently. So you could have two and rotate between them. There's some nice stuff you can get. You can get an extra uh, unleash stage, I think, an extra unleash cooldown on some of the new cluster jewel notables. So take a look into those if you want to play like an unleash setup. So you could do like unleash ball lightning, unleash storm call, and just rotate between the two. Unleash one, unleash the other your charges are built up on the other one you unleash them it might take a little bit of fine tuning to work out a play style that works well with that but that's an example of something that could also work really well with archmage setups and another thing that you could weave into some of the other builds but might be difficult to build around on its own is vile skills so vile storm call for example does indeed work with the archmage setup we can see the damage is normally 11,000 average damage but it's 42,000 average damage <laughs> with Archmage um so if you can build up your Vile Storm Call and then cast that and uh get out some massive damage with your uh, unleash action so Vile Skills could also be another really good example to work well with the Archmage support um the other thing that I should mention it's not directly related to Archmage but it works in all of these builds really well and you're going to want to use it is the new skill Arcane Cloak as well so uh like over here Arcane Cloak is a very similar style mechanic it spends 64 percent of your current mana that you have access to 
So in this case, it's like a huge chunk of mana. But it also gives you lightning damage based on the mana spent. So it gives, uh, where is it? It's like buffs granted added, uh, added lightning equal to 14% of the mana spent by this skill. So it's not like efficient as, it's not as efficient as Arc, Archmage. Archmage is ridiculous. But it's still a lot of damage. And you can take a look at Tooltip, for example. Um, now, I have Arcane Surge on as well here, so it's throwing it off a bit. But we go from like 17,800 to 25,400. So, or 24,500. So, it's also very effective. And it's a pretty solid defensive skill. You see, I get like 2,500 extra mana shield. And as long as you build your mana back up pretty quickly, and you can use instant mana flask or mana flask or whatever, or have like really high mana regen. And uh, Arcane, Arcane Cloak will uh, give you that layer of protection in addition to your mana, as long as you recover that mana. So uh, it takes a little bit of uh, practice to use this well, but generally you're going to use it whenever you want a big burst of damage. Um, and when you want to, like if I want to stand still and do my uh, Orb of Storms, then I'll uh, I'll hit my Arcane Cloak while doing that and build my mana back up like that. So uh, it's also a very effective damage boost whilst also having a little bit of defensive action going on as well. So um, don't sleep on Arcane Cloak, very good in builds like this. You can also support it with Arcane Surge, and Arcane Surge at high levels is usually hard to trigger because it's like, Grants Arcane Surge after uh, casting 345 mana with supported skills. Well, how much is uh, Arcane Cloak costing us? Well, 65, 64% of 3,700 at the moment. <laughs> so we easily, easily spend like, we spend several thousand mana. So it's easy to support a level 20, 21 Arcane Surge uh, with, with Arcane Cloak. So that's quite good. And you can use Increased Duration as well on that to make it a little bit more comfortable to use. I do recommend that. So uh, it's probably one of the best choices for using Arcane Surge as well, for getting you the most powerful Arcane Surge effect if you can get. And then if you're doing some of the other stuff I mentioned, you're getting like 19% more spell damage, cast speed, and uh, you also get your big 1% mana regen, which is very powerful in this setup. You can take a look at my mana regen is like 496 when I cast Arcane. It goes up to 690, so that's quite a bit of mana regen. Um, and also you can boost it with like the Arcane Capacitor, which has Arcane Surge effect, and I think Hierophant also has... Uh, some nice bonuses alongside of that as well. So uh, very powerful stuff. And uh, I think that just about covers it. If you have any like cool setups you've been using, uh, maybe the less obvious setups you've been using with Archmage, share them in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. Maybe using some cool Unleash setups or some unorthodox spells because they don't necessarily have to be lightning spells, but because you're getting so much lightning damage, there is a lot of synergy for using lightning scaling and things like lightning penetration. But it's enough damage that it's probably could work really well on other spells of other elements as well. Um, so I'm keen to hear what you guys are doing with it. But uh, ridiculously powerful. Definitely consider giving it a go this league before it probably gets nerfed next league. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.